This week, city workers and police began violently evicting an autonomous, marginally housed community in Oakland. Like so many others in the US, this is happening everywhere and it's terrifying. But this one felt different. Wood Street Commons, a community where I lived for four months in my camper van. A place where I got to know the folks who lived there intimately. I became acquaintances with them, then neighbors, then friends, (laughs) and then family. I've been processing my own feelings about this past week as I'm now on the other side of the continent this way, by making this, this more video. seating, basically. Uh, just want you guys to know that all this stuff that you see out here is all stuff that's recycled. To tell a little bit more about the life that was there. In July of 2021, I'd been traveling the country in my cargo van, Birdie, for about a year and spending a lot of time in unhoused communities along the way. At some point on my journey up the California coast, people started sending me articles about a community in West Oakland, sprawling under an overpass, seemingly on the edge of the world, and yet a lot of interesting things were happening there. I decided to show up and check it out, thinking I would stick around for a week, maybe. But destiny had other plans. The evening I arrived, I parked my van on Wood Street outside an RV park and walked down a dirt road to find Cobb on Wood. Two nonprofits had combined to build a tiny home village with lots of resources in the center of the camp, tucked onto dirt lots. A volunteer I met took me to another lot where a micro community within the larger camp had developed some resources of their own. The next day, at the suggestion of Theo, the resident musician there, I pulled my van into the commons. For the next four months, it hardly moved. I quickly got to know others there. Moose, the resident genius who could talk to you about foreign policy while fixing your bike brakes. Lydia, the community healer with an activist soul who lived in a trailer in the back. Monte, one of the longtime leaders who wore his heart on his sleeve and had built his own home complete with a putt-putt course. Manaz, a creative who loved to cook and have deep conversations. And John, a passionate leader and counselor who had built a sweeping labyrinth of patios to fill the purpose of a community center. Blown away by these humans, and the warmth of community that was already allowing me in, I decided to stay another week, and then another, and then another month, and then another, and then another. What I saw was creative problem solving, far outside the box. Open-mindedness that can only come through life lived. Radical love and acceptance. The challenges were many and profound, from the lack of basic services or trash collection, to storms and flooding, to arson. But through everything, the community stayed together. Though society's rigid ways might tell us otherwise, what I saw here was authentic, unrestrained beauty.
In August of 2021, California Transportation began evicting members of this community, some of whom had lived there for many years. By the time I left in November of 21, much of the back area had already been cleared. In the months afterward, the transportation agency finished the job, tearing down homes and cob on wood. What was left was one city-owned plot, the Commons. In the last year and a half, the community has only increased its organizing capacity and expanded its outside connections. Many folks from the back and other evicted camps joined the Commons, and residents like Jazz, who began living there after I left, have made the community even stronger. The Commons has attracted more media attention to its cause than ever. And now, two documentaries about the community are being filmed. But none of that mattered to the city. In fact, it might have been a threat. After a lot of back and forth promises and warnings, the city began evicting Wood Street Commons, too. The community is right now resisting, creating barriers to stop the police and laying in front of trash trucks. Others in Oakland are joining them in solidarity. But of course, this isn't a fair fight. In the feeds of the news stations that fly drones overhead, I can see the state of the commons in chaos, under siege, resisting, surviving. Through the debris, I try to pick out the places where we held meetings and parties, where we sang, where we danced around the fire, where we made plans to change the world, better the future. This future is one that while it was a possibility for a long time, I never really imagined. As the community endures physical fragmentation, I don't know what will happen in the difficult transition ahead. But I do know that I believe in the Wood Street Commons, wherever it is, whatever form it takes, and that the Wood Street Commoners have more to teach us yet.